All right, everybody, welcome to another tactics video. Two tactics for you this week. Today, it's all about Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. We had a really good start to the season, really exciting. I think they would be so good this season. They're just a couple of plays short. However, recreated the tactic that they've kind of been playing with over the last few weeks at the start of the season. On Thursday as well, we're going to take a look at Eric Ten Hag's 4-2-3-1 uh, at Manchester United. So make sure you are subscribed for that. Like today's video. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you're going to use. Let's get into it. Patrick Vieira's... Crystal Palace. Okay, so it is a 4-2-3-1. Now, if I just quickly put up a few little heat maps just to show you, sorry, average positions, just to show you what we're rocking with. As you can see, sort of like the Wilf Sahar role on that left-hand side is very attacking. Fullbacks not asking a great deal. I think one of the games as well at left fullback, they did play with Joe Ward, who's predominantly a right back, but they don't really necessarily ask too much of the fullbacks in terms of attacking more of a backup of a support of the wide players. The role of Elise on this right hand side, sometimes it's Elise, sometimes it's Ayu. I'll talk about that as that changes. They've got a middle two as well, that has generally been Eze and Schlupp. And then Dukare, I think a player that Manchester United should have signed this summer. Um, would have been a great signing along in a double pivot. Defensive midfielder, but he's really good at progressing the ball, passing the ball, breaking the lines. Okay, so what we're going to create with the ball is runners. Wide players getting 1v1s. They've obviously got two strikers in Eduardo and Matata. Kind of similar. Like to get involved a little bit. They work hard. They work the channels quite well. They hold up the ball pretty good as well. And obviously we've got Zaha who are really push forward. Without the ball, they do like to get nice and compact. They're those average positions, it is quite a compact shape. Quite a compact team. That's maybe why they've been so good defensively. And obviously we're going to try and hit teams on the break. Now, we've had a good start to the season. We've played five games. We've won the last four. We lost the first game of the season against West Ham. We didn't actually play very well. Um, but since then, we've racked up wins against Forest, Bristol City in the Cup, Brighton in the Derby, Everton last two games, Everton 4-1 and Spurs 4-1. We'll show you the goals from those two games after we've gone through the tactic. OK, so tactic links down in the description. Takes you over to FM Scout. Always the Steam import that you can put it straight in via your Steam or your direct ta tactic downloads. You just put that in your tactics folder in your FM22 folder. All right. In goal, sweeper keeper on defend, no player instructions, Gaeta. Full back role. Now, this is actually a player in FM that's pretty good, Chris Richards, summer signing. They have been playing Nathaniel Klein there, they've played Joel Ward there. Don't ask a great deal. So, what we've got is just a full back on support for two things, but with two player instructions. Sit narrower just to help out the centre halves a little bit and hold position. The Anderson role, the right sided centre half. Just a ball playing defend on defend. This is what I want to see from FM23 is some more player instructions. What I want to say is that sweep. He loves that sweep out to the left hand side or into the chat left channel. I want to see that an instruction to do something in particular, like, you know, find Zaha, find the left channel, something like that, because obviously Anderson does that so, so well. Gay, we've got as a no play instructions, but I've got him as a stopper just because he goes, he does go in, in there and engage a little bit more than Anderson. Mitchell. On the left-hand side, just a full-back on support. He does like to get forward, but I've decided not to go too crazy with it. We want to keep that, that solid shape without the ball. I don't want us to get turned over too much. So Mitchell just in as a full-back on support. Also Zaha. How many times is Zaha going to pass the ball anywhere where he gets it at his feet? He wants those 1v1s. I don't want Mitchell to be going around here every time. Dakare in the middle of midfield. You could change it. I have not put it on. But you could do take more risks because he does like to pass the ball. He's a bit of a progressive passer, but I've just got that on defensive midfielder on defend. Really good player. The Schlupp role, box-to-box -box midfielder, gets about the pitch. It kind of reinvented a left-back. I just feel like Crystal Palace are a couple of players are short. One in particular, another midfield, Jeffrey Schlupp. Yes, he's good, but a really good box-to-box -box midfielder would have been a lot better for them. Conor Gallagher. Imagine that in there with Dakari and Eze. That would have been absolutely superb. Maybe some of them might do in January, depending on how much Gallagher plays at um, Chelsea. Eze is a difficult one. I think the first instinct was to do sort of like a central midfielder on attack, but he doesn't do the sort of like the shadow striker. He wants to get on the ball. He wants to dictate play. So what I have done is I've asked him to be an advanced playmaker on attack, get further forward so we can get into these number 10 positions a little bit. He doesn't play... So much in right in behind the striker. He does like to get in these wide areas. So I've got get further forward and roam from position. And then without the ball, he does sit in to make a double. So like two eights in there anyway. So I thought that was better than having him up there. Dakare sitting off as well. I think that makes a better structure when we haven't got the ball. On the right hand side, we've got Elise. 
who's played a little bit more recently. Ayu kind of does the games where they, you know, they're expecting to defend a little bit more. So if you're going to put Ayu in there, I'd probably put that on a wing on support because that's what he more is. At least he likes the drifting side, obviously. Wilf Zahar, inside forward, on attack. We want to get him as high up the pitch as possible. Hasn't actually had a good start to the season for us. Hasn't scored two assists in six games. And Edouard up front has had a good start to the season. Nine goals, eight in the Premier League. Pressing forward on support. He does work the channels a little bit. But the main key instruction with that, hold up the ball as well for the pressing forward on support. Right, mentality positive. I think that's key. I think now Crystal Palace have had a really, really difficult, really, really, really difficult start to the season in terms of fixtures. I thought they were quite unlucky in a couple of the games. They kind of caved in, obviously, against Man City. Defended well against Liverpool. Were really good in the second half against Arsenal as well. And probably had a couple of chances. They could have maybe even sneaked a 1-0 win against Newcastle at the weekend. So positive mentality. I think they'll start to dominate games when they play a lot of games that they're expected to win, especially at home. In possession, pass into space. I'm trying to, I'm trying to encourage that long pass from... Um, uh, Jockey and Anderson in particular, we want Edouard to chase the channels, we want Zaha to chase the channels, so we want that a little bit. We've got slightly shorter on though, because it isn't so much get the ball up the pitch and squeeze, it is trying to play through the lines. We want Dakari, we want Eze to get on the ball as much as possible. Fairly wide, remember, they do like, obviously Zaha likes to get wide, but in particular when we lose the ball, they get nice and compact, so I'm just thinking about the transition with that, that if we're really wide and the ball gets turned over, we're going to be spread out too much. So just fairly wide, just keeps us a little bit more compact, just in case we have a turnover in possession. Focus play down the left, because we want to get it to Wilf Sahar. Nothing in the final third change. As I said, a slightly shorter passing. Tempo higher. Sometimes, sometimes uh, time wasting. They are quite clever in certain games, especially when they play against the bigger teams. You can obviously adjust these, depending on who you're playing. Run at defence, we really want to see that. And I haven't put be more expressive on. I want the expressive players to express themselves. So maybe that role of Dakare, maybe put that take more risks on. But the rest, you know, the full-backs, um, the, the central midfielder in Schlupp, Edouard, I don't need them to express themselves. It's all about Wilf Sahar and, in, and Eze in particular, maybe Elise. So we've got those rules set, so I don't need to put extra creative freedom on. In transition, take shot kicks. The ball always tries and goes out to the centre-halves. There's an element of obviously counter-attacking and counter-pressing. Distribute quickly because we want to really work that transition. Trying to get the ball in the flanks. Get Edouard moving into the flanks as well. Might you be able to find maybe Eze in some of these little half spaces. Out of possession. Higher and higher. Um, slightly more often trigger press. We're nice and narrow. Force opposition out wide so we get narrow when we're out of possession. And nothing else. It's quite basic. But it's something I think will work really well for you in Football Manager depending regardless of your team it is quite solid I don't think our possession numbers have actually been amazing so far 49 we're 12 so pretty average yeah we're not one of the big boys obviously teams like Brentford and stuff up there like maybe like to keep the ball a little bit better Southampton yep so not massive from us okay last little thing let's just go and see a couple of little goals Edward getting a hat trick in this one and Eze getting on the score sheet as well we've scored a fair few goals from set pieces I think Joachim Anderson's got a few so there's Jeffrey Slup Elise, Schlupp making the forward run. Edward getting nice and high, leading the line really well. Nice, quick play, though. The tempo was quick to Kare. Into Richards. Zaha. Unlucky there, Zaha. But there's the inside forward on attack, getting right into the six-yard box. The next one's just all down to Edward pressing. We've got that higher line. The number nines do like to press. Cuts out the pass. And a really good finish for Edward. It's a really good start to the season for us. And then, wow, nice play to Kare. Once again, really nice pass. Clever pass. Nice little bit of movement. Schlupp and Edward getting in. Will Hughes, the sub. And then Eze getting on the end of it. I think we moved Eze out to that right-hand side at that point. But really good move. Starting from Dakari with that pro progressive pass. Putting it, breaking through the lines. I think if you've got a really good, clever defensive midfielder, I think maybe having that take more risks in that defensive midfielder may really work. And then the Spurs game, 4-1. I couldn't believe this. I think Joachim Anderson gets the first. Edward gets another two. And Jeffrey Schlupp. Love that name, Schlupp. I imagine, yeah, Anderson with a header. I think he's scored three headers already this season. Absolute beast. Destined for a big club, surely. Two from set pieces by the looks of it. Anderson causing havoc again. 
Edward with the header. I haven't done anything for special set pieces. It's just basic. Get the ball in the box. And get obviously make sure you've got your big guys in there. And there we go. Jeffrey Slut into Hughes, who's playing as the um, other central midfield, playing as advanced playmaker now. Schlupp in, good forward run from Jeffrey Schlupp. Once again, was that Dakare? Yeah, it was. It was Dakare. So there you go. Maybe you don't need to, but he has got... He does like to play Dakare. He's a defensive midfielder. He's good at breaking things up, but he is a good footballer. And then Edward sticking in the penalty. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thursday, we have got an 8 10 hag. We've also got to look at Barcelona. There's Over the last few weeks, we've got about two weeks to go of tactics, and I'm going to have a little break ahead of FM23. So any ideas you've got for tactics, please let me know down in the comments, and I'll look at putting them in FM23. It says I want to look at um, AC Milan's tactic, Barcelona, Manchester United, and then that may be us done for FM22. Thanks for your support. Loads of stuff to come for FM23. Some news about that coming probably later on in the month. So make sure you subscribe. Let's plays, tactics, live streams, tutorials, everything you need. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.